Hey everyone, welcome to the vlog for Tuesday, July 9th, 2013, and today is my dad's birthday, but on a different note, we're doing a uh, GameCube collection. Um, I did one of these, I think, about a year ago, but um, basically I think that my GameCube collection is pretty much done. I mean, I don't know where to get GameCube games anymore now that they don't sell them at GameStop, and I pretty much have every game that I wanted to get anyway, so uh, this is pretty much my complete GameCube collection that... Uh, probably the most games I'll ever have. But anyway, let's get started. So first up, we have Animal Crossing. I've had this game ever since I was a little kid. Um, the little memory card that came with it is, I don't think in the case, but I know I still have it. Oh, it is in the case. Okay, that's the memory card that came with it. Uh, I'm pretty sure my old world from when I was a kid is on there. So I'll look forward to uh, going back and visiting to see how crazy that is. Maybe I'll even take you guys with me for that. Uh, it would be pretty interesting to see my house from when I was a uh, kid, but yeah, you know, good times. Uh, this game was a lot of fun. I was really, really addicted to it when I was a kid, so. Uh, next up, we've got Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg. Um, I rented this game when I was eight or seven or so, <coughs> and I really liked it because it was made by the people who made Sonic. And so I, I was really into Sonic, so I thought that I would get this, and uh, it was a lot of fun. I never finished it. It's actually really, really hard, but um, it's a fun game, and I'd recommend it. Um, it's a little weird. It's a lot like Dreamcast games in that way, where um, this is when Sega made like really interesting games. So if you haven't tried this game, I'd highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, next up, we've got Chibi Robo. Um, this is a Nintendo-published game, and one of their lesser-known franchises, actually. But, um... It's fun, it's a little weird, um, but it, it can be fun um, in some ways. It can be also kind of boring, but it, it really depends on what kind of game you like, basically. Uh, in this game, you're cleaning up someone's house. Apparently, there's some kind of like underlying story about the family and helping them get back together, but I haven't actually played that much of it. Um, I kind of got bored, but, um, you know, if, if you like weird Japanese games, you'll probably like this. Uh, next up, we've got Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. Um, this game, I just remember, it was so hard to find, and my friend had it, and I really, really wanted it. So when they made a reprinted copy of it, um, I got it, and actually they never reprinted it after that. It was super hard to find on eBay. They were like $300, and then like now on eBay, they're like $10, so apparently the value didn't really last that long. But uh, it's fun, and I'd recommend it if you can get it with the uh, dance pad. Next up, we've got Donkey Kong Jungle Beat. I got this 75% off. I don't even have the bongos, so I can't really play the game um, like the way it's supposed to be played. But um, I've heard that it's a fun game, so I'll have to give it a try at uh, some point. Next up, we've got Geist. Uh, I haven't actually played this, so I can't really give you an opinion. But I bought it because it was $4. And um, it's actually, I think, published by Nintendo. Which uh, is weird because it's rated M and about ghosts, which Nintendo usually doesn't specialize in. Except Luigi's Mansion. Uh, next up, we've got Harvest Moon Magical Melody. Uh, I got this game because when I was a kid, I looked at videos online of it and I really wanted it, so I decided to get it. Um, I thought it would be like Animal Crossing, but um, I think it was a little too complex for me at the time with all the animal raising and stuff. I just didn't know how it worked. Uh, I really need to go back to Harvest Moon. I hear the one on the 3DS is really good. But they also have um, one on the PS2, which I actually have, but they have it on uh, PS3 Classics, or like PS2 Classics, on the PS3 on PSN, so I have to check that out. I'll probably play it on there, because I just don't want to bring out the PS2 or the GameCube. Um, the GameCube's hooked up, I think, but it just looks so bad on my TV that um, I'd rather play it on a console where it's upscaled. But, uh, yeah. Next up, we've got Kirby Air Ride. Uh, this game was so much fun. I used to play this with my friends and my cousins, and we all had a blast playing this. Like, I, I can't even explain to you why it was fun, because like, if I played it now, I would think it's the most boring thing ever. I would just play free flight mode. But it's so much fun when you're a kid, like flying around, being Kirby. And the map is so small, too, but I would go around it for like hours and just have like so much fun. I don't know how. But, uh, yep. Uh, next up, we've got The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker. Um, normally, I don't like Zelda games, but this seems like the only one where I could kind of get into it. But right when I started to play it, they announced Wind Waker HD. So I wanted to wait for that before I played this one, just because, you know, what I said before about the GameCube looking really bad. Um, so I'll, I'll probably get Wind Waker HD when it comes out. 
I'm trying to make this video short because the last GameCube collection video I did was like 23 minutes. So uh, next up we've got Luigi's Mansion. Um, a lot of people told me this game was really, really bad, so I decided to get it to see if how it was myself, and I actually really, really liked it. Uh, this is one of the few games in my life that I've 100 percented I got everything done in this game, I captured all the boos, uh, I did everything. So, uh, I really like this game, and I'm looking forward to playing the sequel soon. Uh, so, I have it, just haven't played it yet. Next up, we've got Mario Kart Double Dash. I played this game so much when I was a kid. I remember my friends coming over to play this and like bringing over their controllers and memory cards. It was a great time. Uh, I, I love this game so much. Um, it used to be my favorite Mario Kart before Mario Kart 7 came out, but now that's my favorite because <coughs> I didn't really like Mario Kart DS, but uh, Mario Kart 7, you can kind of like, it, it's kind of like a console one and you can take it around with you. So, because um, Mario Kart DS was kind of more like the N64 game and I didn't really like that one that much just because I was used to the graphics on Double Dash, so, yep. Next up, we've got Mario Party 6. Um, this was the first Mario Party game I got, and I actually got it for $10 because by the time I got it, um, Toys R Us was having a clearance because the Wii had just come out, so uh, I got this for $10 with the microphone brand new, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I played it for like, for like three hours the day I got it, and a lot of other times with people, um, and it's fun, so it's, I've heard it's not the best Mario Party, but I've only played, uh, five, six, seven, eight, and, uh, I haven't played nine yet, but I have it, so, you know. Uh, skipped one, uh, next up we've got Metroid Prime. Uh, I didn't like this game, um, a lot of people really, really liked it, I put it once when I was a kid, I didn't like it, and then I bought it again because it was, like, three dollars, and, uh, it's still not good to me anyway, but, um, if, if you like it, that's fine. I just, I think, um, I'm used to more modern first-person shooters and things like that, like, uh, Call of Duty and Far Cry 3 and stuff like that, so maybe that's why I'm not, and when I was a kid, I didn't like first-person shooters at all, so, um, I actually hated Call of Duty for a really long time, so I'm not sure, um, if that's why I didn't like it, but, um, it, I don't know, I just, I don't like it. Uh, next up we've got Need for Speed Most Wanted. Uh, this is not the new Need for Speed Most Wanted that came out on the uh, Wii U 360 PS3. Uh, this is the old Need for Speed Most Wanted, which is super confusing because, like, when people say Need for Speed Most Wanted, um, uh, eh, like, people are like, which one? And the weird thing is that this Need for Speed Most Wanted also released on the uh, 360. I'm not sure if it came out on the PS3, but I know it came out on the 360 because when you look at... Um, lists of people saying like easy thousand gamer score games for getting achievements and stuff this game is always listed but when they say need for speed most wanted i always think of the new one which i have on 360 and the achievements in that are really easy too but apparently this one's really easy to get achievements on on the 360 and um <laughs> well let, let's just say it's confusing this one came out in 2005 when people talk about the other one they say the 2012 game Anyway, though, um, my cousin had this game on the PS2, and whenever I went to his house, I'd play it, and I really liked it, so I got it on the GameCube, uh, like, about a year ago. I think it's in one of my pickups videos from last year. Um, but it, it's really fun. I really like it. Um, I haven't actually played it on the GameCube yet, but the PS2 version is really, really good, and I assume it's the exact same game. I may get it on the 360 just for the achievements, um, and so that I can be in a party while playing it, because, you know, party chat and me were, like best friends. Uh, anyway, though, fun game. Next up, we've got Pac-Man World 2. Uh, my cousin in New York actually had this game, and I was playing it at uh, their house, and it is so much fun. Like, I didn't expect it, and maybe it was only fun because, like, I was joking about it the whole time with my cousins and stuff, but I thought it was a fun game. It's a platformer, which is not something you normally see from Pac-Man, and um, it's interesting. It's, like, you wouldn't think that a Pac-Man game would be a platformer or anything of the sort. Uh, but it's fun, and they have a new Pac-Man game coming out on the Wii U and 3DS uh, soon, so if it's anything like this, um, I'll have to check that out. Next up, we've got Pikmin. Um, so I got this game, like, two, one or two years ago, and um, I just, like, I can't seem to get into it. Like, Pikmin 3 looks really, really good, but this first one, like, I've watched so many Let's Plays of it, like, so many people have Let's Played this game, that, like, when I play it, I'm like, well, I already know what happens, why should I play this myself? So, um, yeah, maybe if I play it with new play control, it'll be different, but, uh, I, I don't know.
Uh, I just, I can't. Uh, next up we've got Pikmin 2, which I got for my birthday two years ago. Um, basically, when I was a kid, I would always go to GameStop, and I would look at the back of this game, and, um... Or was it Pikmin 1? I don't know. I, I would look at the back of one of these games, um, and I would always be like, I'm gonna get that game someday. And, uh, then I didn't, and apparently this game is kind of rare now, like, GameStop used, it's like $40, which is insane for a game that's two generations old, um, so, but yeah, th this game is a lot better than the first one, and, uh, it looks a lot better too, and look, giant enemy crab, just kidding, that's a lobster, but, you know, same difference. Next up, we've got Pokemon Coliseum, uh, this is a printout, um, cover, because I had the original game. Then I sold it to GameStop, then I bought it again, but they didn't have a case, which I hate about GameStop. How do people on it, like, I just can't understand how people keep a game but don't keep the case for the game. Like, what do you do with the case? Like, throw it in your backyard? Like, I don't understand what you do with the case to lose it. But anyway, Pokemon Coliseum is a fun game. Um, I liked XD Gale of Darkness better, but Coliseum was a lot of fun. Um, my cousin actually played it, um, and I watched him, which is what I do with a lot of my games, actually, because, uh, you know, he likes playing them, and I like watching. Um, but anyway, so it, it's a lot of fun. You can transfer the Pokemon between uh, Fire Red Leaf Green, Emerald Ruby Sapphire. So um, if you have those games and you have the Link Cable, which I do, um, I, I used that functionality a lot. Um, I also did that with Battle Revolution, but Battle Revolution costs so much money. Like, it, I traded it in um, because it didn't have a storyline back in the day, and that game costs so much. It's, like, still $50, and it doesn't even connect to uh, Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, so I don't understand why it's $50, and I don't understand why they haven't made a new one or Ranch or anything for the Wii U. They really need a storage system because... Um, Platinum didn't even work with my Pokemon Ranch, which was actually a really cool storage system, but uh, we're, n we're not talking about that right now, so I'll talk about that in a different video, because I could go on for hours about that. Uh, next up, we've got Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Uh, like I said, I like this one better, just because you could get Lugia. And let me tell you, until Heart Gold and Soul Silver came out, catching Lugia was like, and Ho-Oh from Coliseum, was the most annoying thing ever, because I was trying to get all the Pokemon, and I finally did. My Pokedex is 100% completed in uh, black. Um, if you look at my video from last July, um, it's the video of me completing the actual Pokedex. It's 100% legit, um, no action replay or anything. It took, like, five years, but I finally did it. Uh, but before Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver came out, this game was, like, extremely hard to find, or not, not the game. Um, Lugia was extremely hard to get. Um, you couldn't even get it till this game came out. So, when Ruby and Sapphire said, like, gotta catch them all, everyone's like, but you can't catch them all oopsies. So, this game fixed that. Uh, next up, we've got the Prince of Persia Warrior Within. Um, oh, I skipped Pokemon Channel. I don't even... Oh, it got out of order, that's why. Pokemon Channel! Haven't played it, and it looks terrible. But I bought it because it's Pokemon. Uh, next up, we've got Prince of Persia the Warrior Within. Um, I played this game a lot when I was a kid following the sands of time. This was actually my first M-rated game. I was so proud of myself. Uh, now I just don't care. But, um... Yeah, it was a fun game. Sands of Time was a lot better. I hear this game's really glitchy. I don't personally remember it because I went through it in a few days and then never played it again. But I hear it's really glitchy, so, uh, yeah. And next up, we've got the Prince of Persia, er, or not the Prince of Persia, sorry. Prince of Persia, the Two Thrones. Um, I don't even remember this game at all. Like, I don't remember it, so, sorry. Can't make a comment. Next up, we've got Shadow the Hedgehog. Uh, well, you know, this is what happens when Sega tries to be edgy. You get a cartoon hedgehog holding a gun and swearing every five seconds. So, if you like repetitive games with unneeded dialogue and hedgehogs holding guns, then that's for you. Next up, we've got Sonic Adventure. Um, this game was so much fun when I was a kid. I played Adventure 2 first, so I was like... Why is this a director's cut? Like, I, I didn't understand any of that at the time because I didn't know about the Dreamcast or anything. But I actually got my um, GameCube for Sonic Adventure 2 and the Chow Garden and everything. And it was a lot of fun. But this game felt like a step down because I thought this was the sequel. But it, the other one was the sequel. Because my, my friend told me the game was called Sonic Adventure Battle 2, not Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Because if it was called Sonic Adventure 2, it would make more sense to me that this came before. But actually, though... I think this game released after Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on the GameCube. 
So, that's confusing. That Like, they released Adventure 2 first, then Adventure 1, I think. Don't quote me, but I think. So, uh, if they did that, that's probably why I got confused. Next up, we've got Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. Uh, this is one of my favorite games of all time. I played this game for so long when I was a kid. I spent so much time on the Chow Garden. I went on, like, message boards when I was a kid, like, looking for help with my Chow and all that stuff. Um, this was, like, what got me into, like, games, really. Like, I played Spyro and Crash and stuff on the PS1, uh, but this is, like, what got me, like, online talking about games and, like, Sonic and, you know, so... I really liked this game when I was a kid. Uh, next up, we've got Sonic Heroes. I think I've told my story about this game in every other video I've made that mentions this game, and I did a Let's Play of this game, so I don't think we need to talk about it anymore. Uh, it's Sonic Heroes. Watch my Let's Play if you really want to see it. Next up, we've got Sonic Riders. Um, this game is... Uh, I remember buying this game the day it came out, and I was like, what is this? So, uh, yeah, moving on. Next up, we've got Sonic Mega Collection, which is, uh, just the first, like, few Sonic games on a disc on the GameCube. Um, now, what's interesting is I also had Sonic Gems Collection, which is the other compilation, but because Sonic Gems Collection had Sonic R in it, and I found out about, found out about the Tails Doll Curse, I was, like, scared so badly of that thing that I sold the game back to GameStop, and I haven't been able to buy it again because it's hard to find, and it's super expensive. Um... So, I don't, like, I, I don't have any desire to have it back because I have Sonic CD on iOS and on Xbox Live Arcade. Um, so, I don't know. All the other games on that compilation were kind of bad anyway. But I hope they release Sonic R on uh, XBLA and PSN because I, I'd buy it again just to do the Tales Doll Curse. But, um, yep. Next up, we've got Star Fox Assault. Uh, this was my first Star Fox game, and a lot of people hate this game, but I actually think it's a lot of fun. The on-foot missions kind of suck. Um, I agree with most people, but I never played Star Fox 64, and I actually still haven't. I want to play the 3D one, but um, I never played Star Fox 64, so I, I didn't find anything weird about the on-foot missions like some people did, so, you know. Moving on. We've got Super Mario Strikers. I actually haven't played this game yet, so... It's soccer with Mario. It must be a lot of fun. Super Mario Sunshine. This is my alternate box art because GameStop sucks with their boxes and people throw them away. Like like I said, I don't understand how. But anyway, uh, this game was my favorite game of all time for a long time um, after I got it. I've 100% of this game like three times. I really, really like it, but I'm kind of burnt out on it after 100%ing it three times. So it's not something I'm going to go back to for a really long time, but, um, if they re-release re it in HD on the Wii U, I'll have to get it and play it a fourth time, so, um, yeah, I just wish the Wii U had achievements, that would make everything awesome, but anyway, they can probably add them in a patch. Uh, we've got Super Monkey Ball, I got this after Super Monkey Ball 2, and I'm like, where's the story mode, but, um, there is no story mode, this game's a lot of fun, and I would recommend it. Uh, next up, we've got Super Monkey Ball 2, which is a lot more fun than the first one. It has a story mode, uh, a lot more mini-games. They have, like, Monkey Baseball. It was so much fun. Um, I would recommend this. Uh, the new Monkey Balls have really ruined the series. Like, I remember after this one, they had um, Super Monkey Ball Deluxe, and then after that, they had the one on the Wii and the iOS one. And after the one on the Wii, everything just went downhill. Like, I don't know what happened. These games used to be really hard, really challenging, and not as cartoony. And on the Wii, they just, like, threw all that away, and... Uh, it got really bad, and I'm sad because this was one of my... I can't talk today. This was one of my favorite games as a kid, so... Uh, I recommend it if you have a game. And uh, we've got Super Smash Bros. Melee. This is a tragedy because I loved this game when I was a kid. I had 100% like all characters, everything like that. And then um, someone, like I guess, stepped on the game and broke it in half. And I don't even know how, but I found it in a drawer broken in half one day and I still haven't been able to replace it because it's kind of expensive and I want to spend my money on new games um, as opposed to spending $40 on Melee. Uh, but I'll have to rebuy it at some point because it was a really fun game and I'm still sad about how it broke and I found it like that, so, you know. And finally, we've got Wave Race Blue Storm, which uh, I got because it was a launch game for the GameCube. And uh, the GameCube used to be my favorite console, so I wanted to get all the important milestone games for it. Um, I play this game once or twice. It's fun, but it's not really my thing. I don't like um, racing games, usually, unless it's Need for Speed. Or, um, what's that other one that I really like? Midnight something. Midnight. Hold on, it's up there, isn't it? No? Okay. 
midnight. I don't know. I, I'm. It's something with midnight. Anyway, but uh, I don't normally like racing games, so um, I didn't really like this. I only like Need for Speed and that other thing that I just mentioned. I'm so stupid. Anyway, guys, that was my GameCube collection. Um, make a video response with your GameCube collection if you want. Uh, leave a comment below about if you liked any of these games, didn't like them, what your favorite games for the GameCube were. Um, and, uh, yeah. But anyway, guys, that was the vlog for... Oh, wow. It's midnight. Exactly. That was... So now I have to go a day behind. That was the vlog for Tuesday, July 9th, 2013, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I actually haven't seen you in a few days. I'll, I'll have to make a real vlog tomorrow, hopefully. Anyway, see ya.